It is truly humbling the amount of comments and support that you guys have shown me over the course of the last few weeks, especially for those of you who are really truly resonating with the messages of hope that we put at the end of these videos. And for those who have not seen the end of my videos, messages of hope are really about us encouraging each other to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. And I do that through just sharing my stories, the things that I have gone through and hopefully finding a way to make that encouraging for each and every one of us to pick up to move and to get ourselves in gear and that's what we're going to do as we do in all of these videos but today we're focusing in on the most important topics that you guys have brought to me there is the concept of the lock on target for pvp that is going to be a huge topic in today's video also they should use Final Fantasy 14 as an example over the roadmap. And I'm going to give you guys some thoughts on that as well. As a Final Fantasy 14 1.0 beta veteran, uh, there is actually a lot of similarities between what happened with Final Fantasy 14 and what is happening with New World. It's not a one to one, but it's something I think worthy of talking about. And then, as always, we're going to wrap up with our message of hope. If you guys like New World content, if you guys like MMORPG content, well, I'm sure there's a subscribe button around here for those of you who are new. If you find it, sound off in the comments below like all of these incredible people. Welcome in, guys. I'm so glad you're here and thank you so much for that support. But let's not waste any time. We've got a lot to talk about. And I'm going to bring up two comments right out the gate. Morkadin and Careful, they write, Great video, very inspirational. Lots of people need more positive messages. I'm not sure that the update with the aim bot will appeal to anyone really, but musket players are winning. AGS as a whole are probably never going to do what needs to be done, sadly, because of the release window. Throne of Liberty will curb stomp this release, and because the new world, a large amount of people will also avoid Throne of Liberty just because of AGS. And Careful says, a little disappointing you didn't suggest the removal of target lock in PvP. More content creators need to be vocal about how bad it is for PvPers. And there's a reason I didn't talk about it because I wanted to go and really kind of reflect on it. I don't want to just like rush out and give you guys just pure reaction driven content. Here's my hot take about something. I wanted to go and read what everybody was writing about it and the feedback because my initial reaction, my initial thought is why? Why put that into PvP? And I think there's a couple of different suggestions that I've actually seen made and I want to bring up for discussion with you guys here today because I am on board of removing target lock in PvP. But I think there could also be a couple of exceptions and I'd be very curious about your thoughts regarding this topic. First and foremost, there are console specific servers that are locked to console. If they are going to maintain that over the course of time, Personally speaking, I wouldn't mind if they said, okay, console players, if you're just on console, console only, you have target lock. Uh, that would be, I think, a good and fair compromise for them making that adjustment. I do think the system will need adjustments based off of everything that I've seen happen in the game itself. Now, it's not that I'm arguing against aim assist. Target lock and aim assist are two different categories here. I am definitely pro aim assist, and that usually just comes down to fine tuning. I, we were on the live stream and people were asking about it, and in my mind, I was thinking aim assist the whole time. But the ability to lock on your target in PvP just feels a little bit cheeky. It feels like it removes the skill necessary that separates PvPers from non PvPers. The other suggestion that I've seen that I thought would actually be an interesting compromise to some degree is that if you are in lock on target mode, you automatically have like a 30% debuff to your attacks so that while yes, you are locked on target, you're not actually quote unquote as efficient. And that's something that can be developed. And so that's why I wanted to open up this video with this topic, because as a developer, I think the best solution for them is to listen to what the community says and actually turn off target lock, but keep aim assist. I think aim assist is going to be very helpful for anybody who's playing on a controller. And I don't think it gives you as big of an advantage as a lot of people assume, but no matter what, there will be people who make that assumption. The only reason I lost this fight is because they're playing on controller. 
I think that in and of itself is something that needs to say because when you're playing on a controller, things like the little magnetism and more can mean the difference in actually hitting your shots rather than swinging wildly left or right uh, on accident. But obviously you're gonna have more precision with a keyboard and mouse. I just prefer to play on controller, so I'm definitely in that camp. But target lock, I think, is one step too far in PvP. Now, the good thought here is that maybe this is all by design. They wanted to put it in, they wanted to see how everybody reacted to it, and then they can either just turn that off via Switch. So it's not a, a an amount of a ton of development that needs to go into it because it didn't exist already. So it is a toggle that they could turn on and off. Um, but the question is to you guys, yes, I do agree that this we need to be vocal about this this is i think a critical component uh to pvp and pvpers because they're also kind of built differently sure a console player is going to step in to the game and sure there's going to be some hardcore pvpers in that crowd but when we just look at it by sheer numbers that is still a small percentage of the overall population and i think you don't want to upset your pvpers because the true story is is that as much as i enjoy pve content PVP content keeps the concurrent numbers up. PVP is that constant state of change that does attract a certain type of player, but they aren't the volume. They aren't as big as the PVEers, and we wanna have them there because them there is going to constantly keep the game moving forward, and we see this in countless games, any of the games. When Final Fantasy XIV like, redid their PVP within Endwalker, the retention rate from patch to patch just was solid because typically you would see these big ebb and flows that's why when when people talk about concurrent numbers i'm not necessarily ever concerned because it's not just about that players are going to take breaks it's how do you get those players back and that's always the thing that i'm evaluating so that's just my thoughts on it uh yes i'm anti uh, target lock and pvp uh, if they're going to keep it i think there needs to be some kind of trade-off and ultimately if they decided to put it just on console only servers then that could be something that I, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue against for them because then you as a player could choose to opt in and opt out of that. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to sound off below on that one. Now, Steven Guler or Geiler uh, says, I could smell the bias right through the screen. Uh, yes, guys, I am never going to tell you that I don't have a bias, right? Like anybody who tells you that they are uh, unbiased, I immediately am, am skeptical of that mindset. What the point is, what we should do instead of sitting here and try to claim something that isn't true is to let you guys know, yes, this is my bias. I really love New World. I am surprised by that fact to this day. I was like, oh, this is gonna be interesting. I'm looking forward to checking it out. And I found something I think very beautiful and something that I have enjoyed. And I'm going to share that with you. Yes, that does make me biased, but that doesn't make me a liar in this, in this case. So I think that's very, like, I, I just wanna push back on the idea. If you're looking for people who like, and this is just kind of a pet peeve of mine when somebody was like, I just tell it how it is. You know, I'm just keeping it real, bro. Like, all right, dude, like you sound like you're playing a character in a villain movie, like in a Bond movie. Let's go. OK, <laughs> I, I don't buy into that. But yeah, of course, if you can't smell the bias, you guys should know. Like, I love this game. I'm going to tell you about it. I also have the unique ability to tell you about the negatives, the things that I don't like, and also bring in market analysis to the overall picture because that bias in other games People talk about MMOs with these nostalgia tinted goggles from a history perspective. And it, and, and it isn't true. Like there is so much that becomes a part of the zeitgeist that becomes a part of kind of this lore that we tell ourselves about these games that I push back against. And that's why I'm so popular. <laughs> it's like, and it's fine. Like I'm gonna keep telling you guys what I think and why I think it and I like to back it up with numbers math and science but that is just going to be the nature of it you're free to discount anything I say you're free to move on like that's the beauty of social media like I don't want anybody here to feel like they are obligated to a watch my videos or b interact with my videos but yes if you think and for a minute if you think that I'm not biased about video games then let me just hopefully you know break and shatter that glass for you and we can have like a real conversation uh going forward now 
I think I spent enough time on that one. Ak Ak uh, 2060 says, I rarely ever comment or subscribe, but your channel is fantastic. Well, thank you. Uh, unlike other content creators, you just don't echo or regurgitate whatever is going on in New World right now, but you actually give your own opinion on what a plan from there on should be. People always shout for content, but never define what content is. Therapy sessions at the end of your videos are also unique and can maybe even spark introspection into the toxic community of this game. I, I like to highlight this because when we talk about like our extremes, I talked about this on the last podcast. We had a couple of the guys that are more on the woke side, you know, of Gamergate. We've had uh, a couple of guys from the anti-woke side and, you know, discussing different things about the state of video games. If we define the extremes as the base, then yes, we're always going to get uh, these very heavily positive and negative kind of worldviews. The downside is social media kind of highlights those sides. No one's really caring about the nuance. The nuance doesn't get shared. The nuance doesn't get clips. The nuance doesn't get reactions. The nuance is really where the meat and potatoes are. And man, I tell you, uh, you might get some more food analogies from me throughout the video and in future videos because for some reason I'm very hungry today. It is what it is. Today's is, uh, is a fasting day. It's St. Michael's uh, Lent. That's what I'm doing. And uh, and so, yes, I'm not complaining. I chose this. <laughs> Keep me in your thoughts and prayers, guys. I appreciate it. Anyway, um, what I would say, though, is that any gaming community out there, you can find the toxic side. And if you can't, I would invite you to be a little bit more introspective because maybe you are that toxic side. Gamers, especially when content dries up, especially, and this is a pet peeve of mine as well. So welcome to my little gripe session, guys. I appreciate you being here. When content dries up in video games, you tend to see the internet shift into drama. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, if nothing else, like, that seems to be accelerating, especially over the course of 2024. And there's many different reasons for it. I don't think there's one reason for all of this. I think there's multiple different reasons. And so everybody's going to kind of get connected to it in one way or the other. But the thing that we can do in this regards is we can always just control ourselves. So I can't control how a community is perceived. I can't I have no power over that, but I do have the ability to control how I react to things. And when all that's said and done, you're gonna run into toxicity when you increase the difficulty on anything because people will immediately feel like the reason they aren't winning is because of X, Y, and Z. And that's why the thing we should get to, and if I was ever gonna just try to seed an idea into the back of your mind as just a piece of gaming advice, is that don't ever really point a finger at anybody else as the reason why something didn't go well. Always point the finger at yourself and figure out how you could have done something better. Is there something you could have done better? And because if you do that, you'll end up being one of the most top tier, you know, of whatever career or <laughs> feature or game, whatever it is that, you, that you're doing that in on, you will end up being kind of the upper echelon of what it means to be in that category. Because for example, like in a raid, things go bad, there's a wipe. As a healer, I don't say, well, if he got out of bad, then we would have been fine. As a healer, I go, could I have healed him or protected him? Could I, what could I have done to help mitigate that uh, at that right time so that yes, he didn't get out of bad, but what could have I done better so that that would have gone and been smoother? And so it's that constant, you know, focusing on improvement and improving yourself that that's where I kind of I kind of take it. But anyway, thank you so much. Great compliment. Uh, I really appreciate that you guys are enjoying the content. Uh, Kafakala Chefa, and again, forgive all butcherings of names here, people. I um, am dyslexic. Same thing goes with words. He says, people should use Final Fantasy XIV as a roadmap. Final Fantasy XIV and WoW have been neck and neck for the top MMO time and time again. WoW actually lost players to Final Fantasy XIV. Nobody ever uses Final Fantasy XIV as a comparison when it's the better comparison. Final Fantasy XIV has been doing it time and time again. Expansion after expansion, it's not hard to do. Reach level cap and then the end game content via raids, extreme boss fights of the regular ones, savage level raids and the raids of the regular ones, alliance raids, etc. plus people talking about the expansion. They are just now dropping a uh, revamp of the game, which is now the base game. 
Also, Final Fantasy XIV doesn't tell players about an expansion if they just put something out, so people need to chill and have some patience. So what's interesting about this, and this is where it comes into the comparison to Final Fantasy XIV, Final Fantasy XIV took three years to get its act together. From its original launch, and I'm a Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 vet, and probably one of the most hated people within the Final Fantasy XIV community. Uh, that's why it was really great to kind of break that cycle of hate. Uh, anyhow, that's a long story. You can go watch a video of, of here. I think there's a Ginger Prime reacts to it, if you're curious. <laughs> but all that being said, I, like New World's actually a little bit ahead of the curve. Because I would argue that MMOs, especially MMOs, it's all about trying to survive the first three years because no matter what, there's going to be this death spiral. And the exceptions that people bring up, actually like, you know, Lost Ark, for example, that game was out for three years in Korea and struggled pretty daggum hard. And then they figured it out and then they continued to work on it and they made it better and it had a huge success. And whether you want to think the game is still successful, yes. It is a success. That is a successful MMORPG. These things aren't going to sustain themselves. There isn't going to be another wow moment until we have such a huge technical leap that the new thing is only can be done because of that technical leap. Everything else is going to kind of fall into this predictable pattern. And there's so many reasons for that, but I don't want to reiterate that in this video. I want to focus in on Final Fantasy XIV's roadmap and New World. So, New World's actually getting swimming way before Final Fantasy XIV got swimming. New World is, at the same time, kind of having a reborn opportunity as it is launching on the consoles. The thing that Final Fantasy does better than New World is cross-progression, because regardless of what platform you're on, your character is your character, and there's nothing else you have to do to make that happen. New World doesn't have that, and I think that's going to be some continual misstep that I've seen. Same thing with Throne of Liberty. Throne of Liberty is coming out. It doesn't have that cross progression as well, which I think is a misstep because that's something that I'm perfectly fine with checking out. And I do have an upcoming video on Throne of Liberty for like the seven reasons to play and three to avoid. So hopefully you guys look forward to checking that out. What Final Fantasy 14 does though, is that they have put in the work to build the trust so that when it comes down to it, we know when their next expansion is going to be. We know when their next patch is going to be. We know if anybody is paying attention when the next thing is going to be because they have delivered on that expectation. That's where New World needs to get to because as you'll hear me say time and time again, it isn't about October. It's about what happens after October. When is the next season kickoff? What do we get in that season? What can we expect? They need to communicate that. They then need to deliver on those expectations that they have committed to. And that is one of the only ways to truly build up trust. They do that enough, and that's why then people look at Final Fantasy XIV and say, yes, this is an example of how things should be run. And I agree, the communication, the consistency of the, of the content, and the content in and of itself make up the three pillars. And that is something that is why Final Fantasy XIV has taken some players from World of Warcraft. But yes, they do go back and forth because content is king and you do get to a point regardless of whether you're a 14 or a wow guy that you want to play something else and new world i think can slot into that as that same kind of roadmap and that same kind of model because it also does enough things differently it isn't a tab target mmo going all the way back to the start of this video let's get rid of the target lock in pvp because of that it is an action rpg mmo and that is something that is very very important and i think that's something that they need to continue to work on but when people bring up final fantasy 14 they're talking about final fantasy 14 15 years later and new world's just on year three and if you compare new world year three to final fantasy 14 year three there are some really big positives to new world and that's just the reality of it whether you like new world or not you need if you're going to compare it on the same time trajectory new world's ahead of the game they got swimming in in year three final fantasy 14 got that in year seven or eight for comparison they, swimming didn't come into into stormblood and it is vastly different and honestly kind of frustrating when people uh look at it and any any longer than a second especially with the transition between swimming and the open world 
Now, our final comment here comes from Olimers here saying, many of the content people I've watched for the beta have been championing for the single player content. I love it. New World is a single player game. So depressing. I have so much, like this is where like I get the draw of the MMO because that is who I am. I'm a sandbox MMO vet from Final Fantasy XI. That was my first MMO and I absolutely loved it. But to especially the MMO Reddit out, Redditors out there, the economics behind these games are not what they were in the late 90s, early 2000s. Let's just take one aspect of it, inflation. If you look at WoW and Final Fantasy XIV, those are the two games that have subscriptions. There might be a couple of handful of offshoots uh, that do have that. Maybe we'll see what happens with, uh, with, uh, with PAX Day, for example. But even still at $15 a month, the $15 a month from the late, the late 90s, early 2000s to today isn't what it used to be. But it's also something that people aren't willing to pay more for. And in fact, the unfortunate sad news that I have to break here for you today, bring you back to reality is that foundationally, the subscription model has been rejected by the majority and the majority also happens to be the most casual. That's why I also lean in onto the casual versus hardcore is a kind of a versus mindset. I think that's a that's false. I think that's that's actually, you know, damaging the games because hardcore players knee are needed because it inspires casual players to really dive in deeper than they might normally do so. Casual hardcore needs the casual player because they represent the money and the purse and the volume that it takes to maintain these games uh, and support these games and mad the new content for these games. And if you don't have them, you don't have an MMO. And as much as I wish that wasn't the case, it just is how the world works. And then you factor in that these games are going to struggle out the gate. There is not the exception. WoW might be the exception, but WoW is well over 20, is 20 years old. They also have that market dominance. They also have that buy-in, that sunk cost as, you know, aspect to it. So you have to come out in a almost perfect way. So is it possible? Yes. Would I put money on it? No. Am I rooting for it? Yes. The reality is, is that you need casuals, you need hardcore and single player feeds that casual market and the hope is is that you can invite those single players or what i call as the phenomenon of the mso massively single player online is to invite them into the multiplayer aspects but they are the purse and so we want them here and in order to do that in order to have the success this has been the move and this will be continuing the move until something you know something changes whether that's a huge leap in technology making the impossible possible or or whatnot but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we cross that bridge all right now we jump into my favorite part of these videos the message of hope this is where i'm going to tell you about what's going on in my life what's gone on in my life and tell you what i'm doing in my life to hopefully help kind of encourage you guys i you're going to get a little bit of christian theology throughout all of this if you don't like that, oh, no worries, <laughs> like no worries at all. But essentially, you know, even if you're not essentially a believer, it isn't, that isn't the point. It's about iron sharpening iron. Like if we look at, uh, you know, just the scriptures for like sources of wisdom, that's what we're gonna do. And so you'll see that brought up. And that's why I, I love the verse, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. And hopefully you guys get that in these videos. Ace Train writes, thank you so much for your story at the end. It really helped me. As someone who is and has been struggling with my divorce for years now, hearing your story motivates me. Playing New World helps me with my overall confidence in real life. And thank you so much for sharing and congrats to your family. And like my heart goes out, like divorce sounds like it is at, like even worse than what I went through having, you know, my fiance break up with me. Uh, and then that, that was a process. There was a grieving process. I think divorce kind of has that uh, that in you know in, in, in a higher tier like of, of of frustration. So my heart goes out to you, praying for you and your family, my dude. But what I want to say regarding this, the reason I bring this up, the reason I tell that story in the last video, um, is I think there's a couple of things going on, 
And I want to focus in on two key points, like two lies that that we whisper to ourselves all the time. And that is that you're alone in your suffering. There are other people who out there who are struggling with divorce or a breakup and things like that. And so one thing that happens is that you, the, the lie is, is that you are alone. No one else is feeling like you feel. No one else is having as bad a day, a tough of a time as you. And that's not true at all. Sometimes, especially where we've seen this become even worse, and I think this is one of the leading causes where we're seeing an increase in male uh, self-deletes, and that's why I kind of do these videos, because we know people that's happened to this year, and if I can reach one of you guys and tell you uh, that you're worthy, you're worth living for, uh, and you're worthy of love, like, that is... that You can... <laughs> everybody can unsub at that point. Like, it doesn't matter at that point. That is the whole reason for doing this is to hopefully save a life or two. But that's the other lie is that you are unworthy. Those things are not true at all because you aren't alone. It can feel like that. Social media makes it feel like that. That's why I never want people to compare themselves to me. Comparison is the thief of joy. So if you find yourself, you know, like honestly, the product of social media can be mental illness, right? That's why you're also probably seeing so many different therapy services kind of popping up we've created a, we've created a great process of making people feel bad about themselves and then needing to spend money to feel better about themselves and i would highly recommend therapy i've gone to cognitive behavior therapy it works but that's why i just want to kind of highlight the product of social media tends to be mental illness so you gotta you gotta know that right no one's sharing their worst days and so that is how it makes you feel alone and isolated I think we're too hard on ourselves in areas where we need to give ourselves some grace. But we're also too lax on ourselves in the areas where we need to be more diligent. So this is me challenging you. I know my audience here is primarily male. For the ladies out there, you're amazing. Thank you so much for putting up with us. But to the guys, this one's for you. You need to push yourself out of your comfort zone. This isn't something I need you to do right away, but you need to start building that habit. The easiest thing that I find to do is get your ass to the gym because as a man, you need to be strong. And this isn't to say you need to be dominant. That's not what masculinity is, but you need to be strong and at the ready for when you are needed. This will help reduce future regrets that you have in your life. This will also save you countless amounts of money by taking care of your physical health because we are these integrated systems. I call it the pillars of spirituality, mental health, and physical health. Like these three things make up our systems, kind of like the, the, the mind, the body, and the soul, all these things coming together and you need to take care of your physical health and it has knock-on effects. Same thing goes with all of them. If you're, if you're neglecting one of them, you'll find that you get out of whack and out of balance really easily. But I just feel like I have to, somebody out there right now who's listening to these words needs to hear that A, they're worthy of love and B, that they need to get up and they need to take some action in their lives because they're gonna be needed at some point in the future and rather than have a life of regret saying, I wish I tried or I wish I did that, the easiest thing sometimes to do is just go move some weights around, go do some stretching, go get some cardio and see how you feel. And if you and if you feel worse for it, then, then find something else. But if you feel better for it, let me know. That, I think that's gonna help me continue with, uh, with what we need to talk about here uh, as well. I would also like to say that I think that when we look at social media, there's a, as a vast majority, you see this kind of like trashing on men, toxic masculinity stuff, ignore it. Be somebody worthy of respect. Be somebody worthy that you, like you are that, but you know, kick it on, turn it into, into high gear and get moving. And it isn't again about dominance, but strength is what you're called to be. And that can be mentally strong. That can be spiritually strong. That can be physically strong. And that's what I want to encourage you guys today to take uh, and put into action and, and just see how you feel. Because honestly, to the person out there that I know that's listening, that has been contemplating that self-delete, A, don't. 
ask for help and it's not a form of weakness but b give something else a shot i've talked about like my depression and my anxiety and the things that i've struggled with through all of these videos and if you want to go watch them you can always just jump to the end of these videos to get that story but we'll keep sharing the story as we go forward that being said is that sometimes it's the thing that you don't realize that's actually causing the problem i'm allergic to spinach didn't know that was having lots of problems with that for some reason also i had low testosterone that was causing a lot of my problems and people would say how the hell could you have low testosterone you got six kids a full beard like you got chest hair you, this you look like a man well yeah there could be something going on it could be food related it could be it could be environment related right you know, like maybe change out your air filters there is something that you can do and unfortunately we kind of have to become detectives nobody I, I had to fight my doctor to get tested for testosterone deficiency i had to fight him not physically mentally i won and he was like there's no way and i was like test it anyway and he came back and he apologized to me so fight for your health men especially the ladies out there the, the thing though and forgive my ignorance I think the ladies out there already know they have to fight for the health. And if I'm telling you to fight for your health, uh, then good. But every woman I know is like, oh yeah, Brian, you got it. You have to fight. But the men out there, you might not realize it. Fight for your health. If you're feeling like something's wrong, keep going. And you're gonna get an answer. And unfortunately, I wish I could say the answer is tomorrow, but it might be next year. It might be whatever. But this struggle will make you stronger and it will make you absolutely who you need to be and when the moment calls because it will call it calls for all of us you'll be the person you were meant to be and regardless of the outcome you'll say hey you know what i left it on the field anyway guys i hope you enjoyed <laughs> um i got a little bit passionate on that one so hopefully you guys uh helped out somebody out there i'm praying for you guys i'm loving you guys as best i can if you want to be involved if you don't want to leave a comment but you want to just reach out uh, you can always do that through the dms discord server top link in the description uh, we love games and we're going to try to encourage each other to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be and uh yeah i think again man uh, iron sharpens iron um keep me sharp you guys make me want to be better so thank you guys hopefully you all have a wonderful day and hopefully i'll see you in the next video but until then take care